welcome to Poetry Song BFD Battle for Dominance. This is Johanna Bright. I am your host, S. And tonight I want to talk to you all about Robert Fisher, Republican GOP lawmaker, also owner and creator of the Reddit Red Pill Forum, Women Hating, Female Bashing, and what's the word that they use? I love this the manosphere. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to have my girl, KT, is on the line with me. Say something, KT. Welcome, y'all. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're, we're totally stoked about what's going to happen tonight because um, trust me when I tell you that this is the best article I've read in the last week or so. And it's coming straight out of the Daily Beast. But before we go there, I need you all to listen to some stuff I wrote and then uh, <laughs> we're going to get into it. This is Joe Bright at Poetry Song Battle for Dominance, BFD. And I'll be right back with you. Hold on now. Hang in there. We'll be there. I am affected by your smile. Witty and thoughtful, deceiving and beguiling, amorous and suspicious. Your impressive giving nature, that is you. I am affected by your posture. Sitting up straight, back pressed firmly against the cushion, eyes forward, listening intently, hanging on my every word, poised for the confrontation destined to come. I am affected by your thoughts, summations and suppositions wound tightly together by a single strand of perception, by your tombs on your shelves, stacked neatly, read thoroughly. I am affected by your perceptions the way you process information and extricate simplistic meaning from an enigma that is merely life. I am deeply affected by you, what you are, what you will be, what you have become. He played the most romantic songs my ears ever heard. I mean, they stirred in me emotions I didn't know I had, or maybe I just hadn't felt them in a long while. Every word of every song resonated in me and emotion that drew me closer to him. And I just knew that by the time he played that final crescendo of his love's melody, that all he would have to do is rise from his seat, hold out his hand to mine, and draw me close to him, where all I had to do was inhale his scent. And it wouldn't matter if it was brute or cool water. By the time he plays that final love song, I would be his. The melodies of love and affection, the never-ending choruses of how much his desire for me is only overshadowed by how much he admired how I handled myself, my life. How I was the only woman who made him want to be a better man, not just for himself, but for me too, and all that I am. And that one phrase moved me to my soul. The rhythms of the music make my body sway back and forth and side to side. And if I let myself go, I can just feel him at the very edges of my body, using his fingers to skim and manipulate the peripheral of my skin and the trim and the rim of my villa. <laughs> I start to know as my imagination moves closer to the reality of us, what love will be like with him. His music sends me down a rabbit trail of romance and I can see what love will be with him and me and the music and then the songs are over, my eyes are open, and I'm just playing solitaire, and the DJ is moving to the commercial break. All right, this is Joe Bright, and I am your host for Poetry Song BFD. That piece was called I Am Affected. I thought I'd try to, you know, set you all up for some niceties to start with, uh, because the, the subject matter tonight is about uh, manosphere. <laughs> Right. I got I got my girl KT here with me tonight and uh she and I are gonna give y'all uh well she has her own take on it and, and quite frankly I don't blame her. <laughs> right. Men right, men can men can hate all they want to, but trust me when I tell you <laughs> this website is hilarious. I haven't even read that much of it. 
But let me just give you the rundown, right? I was going through the paper as I do every morning. I was, and I caught up on this article by the Daily Beast, and they said that they have found the creator of the Red Pill Forum, also known as Reddit. dot com. And guess who that is? Mr. Robert Fisher, Republican GOP lawmaker from New England. All right, the West Coast. <laughs> Ain't got nothing on this guy. Trust me when I tell you. Um, he's the son of a preacher. Uh, he owns a local computer repair franchise, right? Uh, he is an a he he is the owner, founder, creator of men's rights activists. Can you believe that? Right, the uh, red pill. He's, 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 uh, he's New Hampshire. Right, in New Hampshire, you're right, and it, it, I believe it's District Nine. Right now, this website has over two hundred thousand subscribers. But here's the part that that really got me was uh, KT and I we are uh, we were checking out the website just to see what the heck was going on and KT was going over the um, she was going over the article from the Daily Beast. No, it's not. No, it's not. Now I was reading the. Um, I was reading the what they call it the summary of it to give you an idea of what it is. The summary of the website is: if you think it's a big deal, she'll think it's a big deal as well. So maybe if you act like it's a totally normal thing, then she'll also think that way too. Because that's what women we want to be led around by our noses. <laughs> So the, the next part of it says, whatever you do, she will act the same. This is this is coming right off of the website, right? www.reddit.com. I I encourage all women to please go to this website and, and log in if you can and, and hear about the bullshit that's going on. It says... I, I, encourage, I encourage the men to go to that website. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of shit he's saying. It's funny as hell. It said the biggest disadvantage of acting calm all the time is that any fights or quarrels will be finished before they even start. Girls follow and they like to be led. This in turn means that however you act, she will pick up on it and behave the same way. We don't even have our own minds, KT. We can't think for ourselves. Oh my God. And it says... You know, you know, you know he's speaking. He, we can only speak from our own Exactly. And basically, he's speaking from his life and his experiences and what he's dealt with with women and how women in his life act. But I have a news flash from him, for him, I should say. Uh, all of us women ain't the same, number one. You know, just like different types of men, you got different types of women and they respond to different types of stimuli. But some of the things that he's saying does make sense, though, Joe. Well, and, and in a very broad sense, you could say that it makes sense. But then he goes on and he starts talking about, he says, um, if you start to explain yourself, then you're dead. She will investigate further, making you guilty in mere seconds. If you have an emotional reaction, then it usually will be interpreted as if you're hiding something. Even if it's not true, then it will be assumed as such until proven otherwise. And you can't prove anything, so you're as good as dead. Both emotional reaction and explaining yourself are in the category of making a fuss about it. Many strategies are about ignoring her accusations and moving on. And so, you know, for me, it's basically, to me, it's saying that he's teaching these men how to behave as if, and I guess 200,000 subscribers, he got some people following him in this so-called forum. But 
you're, you're telling these men how to behave in their relationships. And the reality is, as far as I understand it, this, these men are not in relationships. So trust me, if you get in a relationship with a woman and you start behaving like that, you're already in trouble. Not responding, you know. Well, you apparently they say saying this. very broad and it, and then what he does is he pigeonholes women and we're all the same and I agree with you that he's only coming from his his own experiences uh, as a man dealing with women in his life right yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. so one of the things he says is don't make a fuss about anything and he says really anything don't react emotionally be like a rock it's a very attractive quality, and at the same time, will help you pass any shit tests that will be thrown your way. Now, he almost had me till he said any shit tests thrown your way, because it, it's really saying that women are always looking for a way to to test men uh, some, you know, category of their of their relationship. And he says when you. But you know what? Again, that's but it only it's only I well I get what you're saying. But again, we're still talking about men who um who are only gonna deal with a certain type of woman. But overall it's saying overall all men deal with a certain type of woman. I'm saying those think anybody should back down in a conversation in a relationship either because here's the thing and and this is just me personally just like you personally or and, and generalizations i personally think if you have something to say in a relationship your best bet would be just to just go ahead and say it put all the cards out on the table because every day that walks by that you have something to say and you don't say it and you're just placating to that person just so you can keep things calm. Trust me, the waters are boiling underneath. And some shit is going to hit the fan. Wall, the perfect wall. All hope and patience just would be like that. Well, and yeah, that's called know, television. <laughs> And, and that's fine if that's the way that man is and that's his that's his normal behavior, you know, but we're talking about a man on the website telling all men who join his website. This is how you need to behave around any woman, not just not just a particular woman, but any woman. And oh, well, no. Well, heck no. Because. Teach them how 
think uh, and, 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 and react, sometimes they wind up being the, 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 the crazy one. Well, you know? yeah, that's true. But, but you know what? The thing I think that got my attention was is because the owner of this or the creator of this website has had his little hand in creating websites for people to follow for a minute <laughs> since high school from what I read in the Daily Beast. Right. And he's a political figure, not just a political figure, but he is a GOP lawmaker, which means he has no business heading up a, a website like that because that makes it one-sided and you know feminists do not like it when politicians have interests i'll just put it like that outside of the work that they're supposed to do um he has uh he owns a local computer repair franchise he aside from all that he is a uh, <laughs> you remember reading on this. He's the member of his own, of a band called the Five Nines. But, you know, the Daily Beast said that they did a research. Yeah, he's the only member in the band. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we, we should leave that one alone. You know what? I'm going to take a break. You guys, I want y'all to take a listen to this. And um, we're going to get right back to you, Okay. Just hold on. Here we go. <sighs> my hands are swollen this morning. And I can feel the swelling in my temples all the way down to my toes. And I haven't even set up in bed yet or opened my eyes. But I know what it is. I shouldn't have made such a big deal about that box. I mean, hell, it's just a box anyway. Some cardboard, pulp, wood, paper, a tree. But I wasn't about to let anybody except me pick up, move, slide, carry, or open it. It's my box and everything in it. It's personal and private and precious. And I'm not being presumptuous about it. I know what's in it. What's in it is mine. Always has been. So it doesn't matter how much it weighs, how big it is, what's in it. It's my box. And these are my hands that are swollen and tight and throbbing. I wish I handled it better, but sometimes you got to make snap decisions and snap judgments and snap remarks. And sometimes you got to use muscles that haven't had a workout in a while. But today, it feels like my head and my hands and my feet and the pain just getting up. But I got the box full of memories, memorabilia, trinkets. I don't know. But the point is, I was supposed to get that box. It was meant for me. It's not the box that matters. It's what's in the box that does. I didn't put what's in the box myself. My actions, my decisions, the, the, there was no way of knowing. I mean, and it was putting the box for myself. It was a selfless act made by a selfless person whose only passion was to selflessly give so that others could shine and then they could just bask in the glory. Not their own, but to share in the glory. But not to the point of forgetting why it's important to commit the selfless act in the first place. So, I have the box. And while I didn't physically put what is in the box that makes it mine, I am the keeper of this precious box. And while you may not understand why the contents of this box for me was so hard to obtain, to fight for, to cherish, to win, to pass on one day, the time may come when you will have to do the same because I may at some time selflessly put into the box a thing that is uniquely yours and you may find yourself in harm's way of this box. Yes. I woke up this morning and I could feel the swelling in my hands, my temples, my feet, down into my soul. But I got the box. Was it really going all so well? You were finally doing all those things that you thought you wanted to do. The mistress or master of your destiny. No one, I mean no one had control over your day. It was planned out to your specifications, desires, goals. Nothing happened that you didn't know about in your life. You made your own schedule, set, planned, and wrote the script of your day. Then you got sucker punched into thinking, that you had a place in this world, 
You foolheartedly believed that this was a race you could win and that you had a dog in this fight. You had two proverbial cents to put in and make a difference. <laughs> you weren't alone. Even though you completely forgot that you didn't want anything to do with the fight, because the fight, the battle, the war wasn't for people like you. People who believe that if you play fair, play your cards right, don't cheat, be honest, never malign another person, step on someone else's throat to get ahead, or push aside the ideas, conceptions, and hard work of another to get ahead, that if you respect the boundaries of another, that you would do well. But that's not true. This world isn't for you to conquer or to claim. It already has its victors here. And they aren't about to give up the throne without a fight. They've claimed what they know are the best parts of this world, and they are not about to relinquish that power to you or me or anyone else. They have been grooming and molding and shaping their children for decades so they can hand that power and wealth over to them. And if I or you want a piece of that power or wealth, don't think it's going to be a fair fight. Because the powers that be have trained their heirs on how to wield, manipulate, and lord over others that power and wealth. So that one day all that power, wealth, that big dog in the fight can be theirs. And their children have been fighting amongst themselves for all that power, all that wealth. Their servants, even the lowest of their ranks, have been salivating about that power, that wealth. Their servants, the undeserved privileged, who open and lock their doors and stand behind them in public, looking out for their well-being. Their servants who send their hard-earned money to their families, open 401ks and money market accounts so they can send their children to schools where the tuition is higher than your yearly salary. Their servants who make sure their friends get the best jobs, even at the lowest levels, because they hear privileged conversations. And their friends act like they're privileged because they were the first to get a job when no one else could. And they all become beholden to the privileged few, unaware that they're being used and stepped on. They don't really see that they're no better off than those of us who don't know the privileged few. They just get to hang around them sometimes. They don't have a dog in the fight either. The rest who have been used and misused, who have been put out and stepped on, made to feel less than themselves. Especially after we've all spent our entire lives reminding ourselves daily that we are somebody. Somebody with worth. Somebody with intelligence and sophistication. Somebody with the ability to stand up for ourselves and to stand with others for a righteous cause. We just want a change of power. To hands we think we can trust. But sometimes it's the same set of hands with a different label. And the same people in power still manage to make you feel like if you just hang in there, one day you too can have a dog in this fight. If you want to. All right, we're back. This is Joe's Poetry BFD Battle for Dominance. And I'm going to tell you right now, what we're talking about tonight has a lot to do with the battle for dominance in the whole American dating culture scene. And we're talking about Robert Fisher, uh, a, a Republican GOP lawmaker who is in New England, New Hampshire. He's one of the New England states. And he is the creator of the Reddit Red Pill website, man hating. They're calling it a man hating website. And it's, it's a manosphere. And what he does is that he's created this form where any man can come in and bitch and moan and groan. But he also has his own personal things that he talks about what he thinks how men should act in a relationship or even at a date. But And so far as I can see, he's really just talking about what he would do. But, you know, that's that's how it goes. Now, I got KT right here. She got a, she got a comment as always. Given this young man's age, he's only 31 years old. He's very young. 31 is old enough to have dated quite a few women, though. So you're saying because he's 31 years old, we should help him get get a pass? No, 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 no. I'm not giving him a pass. I'm giving him a stupid car. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he's speaking from the perspective of wisdom. You know, he's talking about something he thinks he knows. And the thing is, is you don't, if you're into women, you're into women. And you don't know how each woman you meet is going to act. And the thing of the matter is, you know, you're blaming a lot of crap for your life, a lot because he's probably got a lot of, it doesn't 
actually happened happened to him over and over again. These different things that he's trying to advise men on. Um, he really needs to get that. You know, he's just he he's learned what the what the problem is. Now he needs to sit back and learn how to solve it in his life first. Because you know he's trying to tell somebody else how to live their life. And I bet you same woman still showing up in his life. So Probably. You know, Probably, yeah, probably the same woman probably is showing up if he's not married. I didn't really do that extensive a search on him, um, but he created this website in 2012. So if he's 31 now, he was really just a baby back in 2012. And he, yeah, he right. And yeah. so then he ran for public office right after it. Uh -huh. He, you run for public office after you set up this website and you don't remember, oh, wait a minute, I really have to wait, make sure that my public my public persona, you know, is the same as my private persona when people go and look me up. But he didn't close off any of those links. So, you know, now he's, he's had to take down his Facebook pages. He hasn't responded to the Daily Beast for a comment. And he's backtracking, trying to figure out how to get out of it. Now, you were telling me while we were on the break that, and I so agree with you, that this is number 45. You know, it sounds like it's something, a, a website that he would go to. <laughs> Right, right, right. Right, Fredericksville is the site that he created when he was in high school. He actually programmed and built that website himself. So, and and and, and I can imagine how hard that would be. It, it, well, he's thirty-one now, and you know anybody can go to a website and build a website where everything is pre-measured and pre-mixed for you. But this young, he did this all from the beginning, so he's not an unintelligent person. Okay. Well, that's because, like you were saying, at 30, what I'm trying to tell you, he probably didn't even think about it, that anybody would even find out that it was him because, you know, I mean, we're still talking 31 and his friends, he needs to get a whole new group of friends or, or advisors or something like that. Exactly. That's why he's got to be friends with number 45, the orange one. Because that man, he is, he is the epitome of stupidity. He has the, he has a platinum stupid card. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you. They need to give both of them a black card and stupidity. Girl, please. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, and, and <laughs> just, just need to be revoked. Just need to be revoked. I'm telling you right now. But, um. And and it's funny because you can go to his Fredericksville dot com uh, site was still up when I read the article this morning. The five nines that stuff. He's like I was in a band. I mean that's still ongoing. I mean this guy is acting like oh, I'm going to do some politics for a little while, and if that doesn't work, I I can always go back to you know doing my website. <laughs> but you know the thing. You know the thing that gets me going back to his band, the five nines. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Well, you know what? Even if you got two people, you can say you're a band. I mean, but one of y'all can play the rock and one of y'all can play the wall, but whatever. <laughs> or you get a keyboard, you can play any instrument you want. Or you could, right. Exactly. Exactly. But this guy, he's he he's got all this shit out there already, and he's he he didn't he what he must have thought that nobody would ever find him, but the Daily Beast found him, and so now he's backpedaling and backtracking and trying to figure out how to you know make this oh, shit look minute. pretty. Wait a minute, he told the, he told us that okay, so it says it's impossible that now that he has been Uh -huh. Red Forum 
right. claiming I should know what the red pill was. And what is the and, and what that last part was, just what, what is that question that he asked the Daily Beast? He said he didn't know what the red he pill did. was. So he did so he did say he had heard of the men's right movement he said he hadn't heard of PUA. What is a picking artist? No, what is a pickle artist? Right. Yeah. Right. So if you don't know anything about it, right, if you don't know anything about it, how the hell you know what PUA stand for? And don't be saying just because you're 31. You, your website is, is telling a bunch of stupid ass men how to pick up women like we out in the field grazing like cattle or some shit, you know. I, I detest... I detest that I detest men and women too who think that you know it's just a matter of going out there and you know it's a bunch of men standing around just waiting for you to pick them up or it's just a bunch of women out there just standing around just waiting to be picked up and there's this you know won't will never fail algorithm that he personally has thought up and he's put it on his website and you know he's telling these guys just do this and it'll be perfect and and I'm thinking what? Get this, Joe. Get this. Within four hours of contacting Representative Fisher and after delivering by email a summary of his apparent connections to the red pill kingpin, his two primary Reddit usernames has been wiped and four blogs connected to him were deleted or made private. He has not returned additional requests for or for comments. Nope. Mm. I know. And I read that article. Um, I was like, are you... Ca- say that again. I said, oh, but all of a sudden this stuff has went underground. Right. He didn't go, because he's so dark. <laughs> Remember, he comes. From, he's his district is really small, even though he's a lawmaker. But his it's an important district. That's why he is backpedaling and backtracking because he probably thought, "Oh, I'll be a I'll be a, a a politician for a minute, and then I'll go and do something else." But he turns out he found out just how much money you can make as a politician. And I think I like this job. I want to keep it, but I've been going around bad mouthing women and telling men how to treat them like shit. <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that. He needs a fixer. <laughs> he is. He is. So I'm, I, 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 I want everybody to know that this is Catherine Winston of the Jamaica Funk Show. I am her co-host. And we record our shows weekly on there on social media television on YouTube. You can pick us out there. Or you can go to www.jamaicafunkshow.com and see all of our episodes and our radio shows that we do. Um, KT, you got anything else you want to say? Um, yeah, listen to our show tomorrow night uh, on Spreaker.com and search the Jamaica Funk Show, or not the Jamaica Funk Show, but Jamaica Funk Show. Right. And you'll pick us up, but we're usually on about 9, and not between what, 9 and 9.15. Yeah, yeah, Spreaker. yeah. And if you don't have it, yeah. Something. What? We may not be live Remember, we we may not be live. We might wind up um, um, doing offline. Yeah, because uh, yeah, one of the one of the things about this wonderful technology today is sometimes where depending on where you are, the signal can get really jacked up. And uh, mm-hmm. it, for some reason, it works well during the day, but in the evening, you you trying to figure out how to get things set up, and it's like, nope, not gonna let you work offline. And you know what, KT, it may have a whole lot to do with that freaking fracking Mercury retrograde. You know, I can't stand Mercury when it's retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, I don't know. Because it was, we were online and we were doing really well, and then uh, around the, the mid April or so, we were not able to do live broadcasts after uh, we recorded our social media uh, talk show. And so we've had to record them and then post them later. So if you haven't heard them and you'd like to hear some of the broadcasts, just go to iHeartRadio and download the app or listen on demand. We're all there. Our cohort, 
I'd like to call him a co-host, but he's really a cohort. Christos Tartitos. No, he's a troublemaker. <laughs> he's a troublemaker. He's definitely a troublemaker, and I, I, I want. I'm going to bring this up to him tomorrow, uh, some tab uh, tomorrow, because I want to hear what he has to say about it. You know, yeah, he, he's always got a, a something to say. He's definitely a man. He's a man. Okay, so real quick, Serena Williams is Serena Williams is pregnant. The tennis star, she is pregnant, and um, she, yeah. But and here's the thing, um, Ilya Nastasi, who is the former uh, champion tennis player, white guy, right? He's a white guy, and he was quoted as. Yeah, he was quoted as saying, I wonder what kind of baby she have. Will it be chocolate with milk? <laughs> well, what a man look like? Or did she, or did she go to a bank or what? No, she has a boyfriend. You know, she reminded you all kinds of strange things they have babies. Well, you know what? Her baby, she is in the, she's in a mixed relationship, all right? Her boyfriend is of the other persuasion, right? So I don't That's know his like nationality. Right, but... He had no right uh, to say that because he knew that she was in a relationship with the guy who wasn't black. And well, he's trying to figure out if the baby's going to come out white or if the baby's going to come out um, a little white, little black. Or mm -hmm. if the baby's going to come out black. Right. Well, that's the but the way he said it. Right. But the way he said it. Right. Why you know, would you care? That's the question. Why Why is it any of your damn business? But Ilya Nastasi has been known to be a big troublemaker himself. You know, he's gotten away with saying a lot of shit in the media because of his notoriety. And that's just how that shit goes. And yeah. And another thing that happened in, in, in the news today, Johnny Depp is, sh is suing his finance managers for forty two million dollars because they're saying that he doesn't have hardly any money left because he spends it too extravagantly. And he was quoted as saying. Oh, Kevin, he doesn't give a shit. You know, I could spend all my money on cotton balls. I'm not supposed to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> your ass is in charge of my money. You've been taking care of my money all this time. And your own thing is I spend my money extravagantly. He said, I don't care if I spend all my money on cotton balls because they were complaining he spends $2 million a month. Well, we're still talking about Johnny Depp. Well, no, you, you're talking about Johnny Depp. Right, and he's worth more than, and he's worth more than that. So he's suing them. He's fired them, and he's suing them, and they they've been up to some tomfoolery. But how many celebrities get taken like that on a regular basis, anyway? Back in the day, we used to hear that stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what. Well, 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 um, Johnny Depp is saying that they've been, they have forgotten to file his taxes. They've been filing his taxes late. Like they had some other shit more important to do. <laughs> Yeah, Bill and Bill and Oprah giving the same damn advice. They're giving the same damn advice. Put that. You make sure that check gets in your hand first. That's right. It needs your signature. It can't go off without the signature. Yeah, I don't think if I was that rich, right? And if I was that rich, I would never, ever put all my money in the hands of a a company and say I trust you. You don't know them to trust them. They're a company. Their job is money. And their job is your money. But your job is taking care of your money that you work hard for no matter what you do. <laughs> uh, I, won't, I won't say I, what I'll never do because I don't know. No, I'm not saying I, I'm saying I would never say I trust them with my money because that's just not smart.
Yeah, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. That's a slippery slope. Thank you. Yeah, that's a slippery slope. But I'm just saying, I would I trust somebody trust somebody else with my money. Nobody even really trusts the bank with their money. That's why people are always checking on their bank account. So I'll just leave it right there. But they don't, they, they hope, they hope they can trust the bank. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, okay. there is and that. People are still trusting the bank uh, with their money. They're still trusting them with their money today. So people trust the bank with their money now. Um, it, some folks don't even check their bank accounts to see what's in it. And there are people who do. You know, because it, it depends on what your money conversation is. That's true. But all I'm saying in terms of money debt, um, and out he's I bet you got, he probably got them letters from the IRS saying you haven't filed your taxes and then he's, and they come to him in his name. <laughs> well, yeah, and then when you don't answer them, when you don't answer those letters and those emails, they call you up and that's probably how he found out because it don't sound like they were trying to tell him. <laughs> but you know, we are running out of time. These conversations always... Girl, yeah. Yeah, you know, we we gotta cut this conversation okay. short. I'm I'm running out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that happens. I Girl, yeah, me too. Anyway, thanks for joining me, KT, and we'll see each other tomorrow when we go to record the Jamaica Funk Show uh, for yeah. social media television for our YouTube channel. And, uh, you can find out everything about that on www.jamaicafunkshow.com with Catherine Winston, Christos Tosidas, and myself, Johanna Bright. This is Poetry Song, BFD, Battle for Dominance. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back with you guys next week. You know, I'm playing no music, but I will send y'all out with something that I wrote. So y'all have a great day and enjoy. Don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you take a look at the day, at the end of the day, after you turn off the lights, just before you close your eyes, just before you scoot down underneath the sheets and find that perfect spot for your head and your pillow, don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you step out on faith and take that leap into the unknown, when you know that rejection is far more likely than acceptance. I mean, after you put yourself on a tight rope of hope and you just have a string of support, but you persevere in the face of adversity, don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When the right thing to do was not the popular thing to do. When you want to do the popular thing, but it's not the wrong thing. I mean, it's the wrong thing, but it's not the wrong thing. And you know it's the wrong thing but it's the thing that will make you popular. Don't you want to be impressed? I want to be impressed. When you wake up tomorrow and yesterday wasn't as bad as you thought it was and that if you can make it through today doing what you're supposed to do, only doing it better than yesterday because you weren't too sure of yesterday.